Hello and welcome to the Craft Man Show. My name is your host, the Craft Man. <laughs> Guess who just got back from Japan? Oto7. Yeah, <laughs> Oto7. Uh, anyway, uh, we sent Oto to the factory, let's just say, to fix a few glitches he had. And keep on. <laughs> Oto7 came back from Japan with an extra voice and brought with him a new word. Oto7, what's our new word of the day? Sofubi. Sofubi. That's right, Sofubi. And what is so Back from Japan, my friend. It's your boy, Oto7. Here to bring it again. Here to bring Sofubi. Bring Sofubi. Bring Sofubi. Bring Sofubi. Bring Japan. Sofubi. What is it? The term basically means soft vinyl. More specifically, since it is a Japanese term, it refers to soft vinyl toys made in Japan. Japan has a long history of toy production. In fact, the very first industry allowed for export from Japan after World War II was toys. The lowly tin can, for instance, discarded at American military bases and salvaged by the Japanese, became raw material in the revival of Japan's important toy industry. Sofubi manufacturing has been going on since the 1950s. This was back when toy manufacturers was deciding, you know what, maybe we should not make toys out of celluloid anymore. Here's a ping pong ball made from celluloid, which is quite flammable. So they started using plastisol, a suspension of PVC particles in a liquid plasticizer, resulting in a pleasantly soft plastic feel. And the plastic formulation can be varied to yield more softness Check out the softnessity of this right here. Very pleasant. Or it could be less softness. Before we go further, I want to say, sofubi, as I said a while ago, is a Japanese term. However, the same term is now being used widely by Chinese factories as well. So are you Chinese or Japanese? So the term sofubi has grown to the point that you will hear soft vinyl figures made in China also referred to as sofubi. Kind of like how animation that looks like anime, we call it anime even if it's produced in the United States, which probably we should call it anime style, but I digest. Let's look at what sets sofubi manufacturing apart from injection molding and other methods. Before production of your figure can begin, a mold must be made. So, your figure, which can be sculpted physically, in clay, in wax, or digitally, or however you are comfortable, will be molded. And a wax copy of the toy created. The wax prototype is coated with conductive metal then is submerged in a chemical vat for electroforming. In this example, copper is being used. Once fully electroformed, the wax is melted out of the mold. Huge bonus alert, as opposed to CNC injection molds, sulfur molds can be even more complex, even with undercuts and things that you might would avoid in resin casting or injection molding. To finish up, handles and eye hooks are added. Now how these eye hooks are going to be used will make sense in a little bit. 
In general, the molds are built to be very rugged, able to withstand repeated pulls of vinyl. Liquefied vinyl can now be poured into the mold. The mold is pressurized to remove bubbles or, if not pressurized, is put into a centrifugal force machine. This will also remove the bubbles. It forces that vinyl down into all the little nooks, crannies, crevices, and creases. And now they take the vinyl filled mold and set it down into a hot chemical bath. This is pretty interesting right here. This chemical bath reacts with the outside of the metal mold, curing the layer of vinyl inside the mold that's touching the metal. Now what's actually in these vats is a bit of a mystery. Some people use oil that's heated to around 180 degrees. Some people use a mixture that involves, I have heard, a toluene. It's considered trade secrets to some people. But I have been told that it does make a difference to, uh, like if you're doing clear, uh, you probably don't want to use oil, but if you're not, you're doing clear, an uh, oil bath is okay. Uh, but it does make a difference. I have been educated on that. Excess uncured vinyl is dumped out to be reused. Finally, the hot mold is cooled off in a water bath. And the soft vinyl is very carefully, expertly removed from the mold. Careful not to tear the vinyl. At this stage, the vinyl is incredibly soft and flexible. The end product is traditionally packaged nice and neat with a header card. Like this Wonder Bar right here, available at Vinyl Wonder. This is one of the first soft vinyl figures I ever have got. Thank you, James, for this. The softness of vinyl can vary greatly with the use of heat. Careful to move the part, move it. We don't want to scorch it, but it'll get so soft, watch the, it cuts like butter. And allows the sockets to snug fit right together. Now it's cooled off and back to normal firmnessity ready to be painted or customized like James did with this uh, craftsman wonder bot right here. I sculpted a craftsman head and uh, stuck it in there. Duplicolor auto vinyl works okay, but even it doesn't touch this right here. Look at this. That's vinyl wonder paint on a Glio PVC figure. I have a link in the description to the Wonder Bot as well as Vinyl Wonder Paints, which uh, so far there's no other paint I've tried that binds to vinyl as well as this paint. And a little twist, a little pop and twist. Let's talk about why is Sofuba special. First, just watch the process. Tell me what's different about that compared to, say, uh, this right here. So for the vinyl pulling is, is slow paced, relatively. I mean, these folks get into a kind of a zen-like rhythm, gradually pouring, curing, and pulling vinyl. Okay. And it seems to be a pretty low stress uh, factory environment. I like that. Oh, by the way, uh, this gentleman and lady right here, this was a husband and wife couple who's pretty well known for producing uh, vinyl toys in Japan. They've done this for quite a few years. But even if we take a look at a Chinese soft vinyl production factory, we can see it's still a pretty unhurried process. And that's the thing I like about it. And soft vinyl figure designs in general have a tendency to be very creative. As I said earlier, the drastically different molding technique allows for far more organic, gnarly, bumpy, detailed sculpts. And just about uninhibited, unbridled creativity. Like this wonderful calico kaiju kitty right here. 
This is Kaju Nagora by Max Toy Company. And I believe it's based on a Kanasu design. But we can see the almost Godzilla-like Kaiju, or AKA Monster, a look that it has to it. Check out the twin tails right here and all the little textures and little grooves. Just wonderful. South Final has a warmth about it. Uh, to a child, I would imagine, so Fubia figures seem to feel more alive. It's like uh, South Final's kind of like a cross between plastic figure and plushie. It's got that warmth and that squeezable huggability, but you can play with it, you know, articulate it. Ano, ko, ito, jun de dak ko, isyon ni asong de. A good example would be Son of Godzilla right here, which, uh, thank you, James, for loaning this to me. I got it out the bag just long enough to show and to give me a spin around shot, but uh, I want to preserve this. Uh, oh, that's 19. It says right here, 1960s. I want to preserve as much of that vinyl uh, vintage smell, so we're going back in the bag. I asked my Patreon supporters for questions, and the number one question is, why is Sophie so expensive? Because of the time involved in it, the material cost, and because these figures are often released very limited numbers. And what they do instead is to release colorways, new versions, new varieties of a figure. You might have a figure that's one of 30, or one of 50, or one of 10, or maybe even one of one. The rarity adds to the price. Another special part of Sofubi is the community. Like the artists right here. I make plastic toys, but I actually do care a lot about the environment, so I collect trash and find interesting bits to kind of make together and repurpose. I was hesitant to start listing off specific artists because there's so many, and I'm new to the whole scene. But let me just run some names by you just to at least get you started. You should know about Mr. Mark Nagata and Max Toy Company, uh, named after his son, Max Nagata, who is also a toy sculptor. I think that's just absolutely marvelous. Mark and Max, y'all keep that up. And we got Mr. Mora Katsura, better known as Real Head, or RXH. And we got my man, Buana Spoons. You can see the Richard Scary influence in a lot of his design. Very charming. I really, really like these little characters he does right here. We got Mr. Jerome Lou. Recently introduced to him. Look at some of this work. We've got Miss Candy Bolton. Uh, we've shown some of her work uh, earlier in the video. Very intricate design. Does a lot of kaiju and other little and cute things as well. A post toys over here. Mr. Neil Ewing. Uh, that's bombastic plastic. Fantastic toys right there. Magitarius, husband and wife duo. Couple right here knocking it out the park with these toys, little figures. And we have Last Bastion Studios over here. Uh, check out this. I showed a little bit of this Luchador figure. And I would be remiss if I did not mention Goto Sign. Uh, Mr. Goto, this gentleman right here has been painting Sophobie for over 60 years. 60 years. And does not appear to hate the process. Look at him. He has found a secret to enjoy in his work. Speaking of painting, I've mentioned Vinyl Wonder for durable, vibrant vinyl paint, but he also releases figures on his Wonder Goblin shop, so please check that out. I want to say a special thank you to Wonder Goblin, Vinyl Wonder, and to James for helping me get this video made. It would not have been possible without you. And I want that to bring me to my next little surprise here. We are working in collaboration with James and Vinyl Wonder to have our own soft vinyl figure manufactured. Here is a look at the prototype of Mr. Otto Seffin. Really is a, a very strange, surreal feeling to be looking at this right here. And this is from the factory. That's the prototype. What y'all think about that? Traditional aesthetic crafting has always made and sculpted and, you know, cast or whatever, injection molded our own figures. But so for me, that's a little bit outside of our realm for right now. 
But we are still cranking out pocket knot figures a little bit at a time and putting them online. Uh, looks like there's some online right now. We're going to keep on trying to make those. And we have got pictures back from all over the place featuring the pocket knot in new and exotic locations. Thank you so much to everyone for sending us these wonderful photos. However, Craftman ain't giving up on figuring out some DIY methods that we might could use. In fact, I did a video uh, some, some time ago about how to do rotocasting. There's you a one way to approximate so for be it won't be as as velvet as smooth, but it'll be something. Patreon supporters, keep a look out. We're gonna do a giveaway with a couple of uh, Wonder Boss and Resin Craftman heads as well as some other goodies. Like a sealed copy of this future retroistic art magazine. Wonderful. We were featured in this recently, uh, Steady Crafting Figures, and very honored to be part of this. Thank y'all. Stay tuned on Patreon for that. For anyone who wants to jump right into Sofa B Soft Vinyl Collecting, I have a link, a bunch of links actually, in the description, and I will be adding to these links as I get new links. For anybody who's interested in having your own toys made, I am going to include a major, major fantastic resource in the description. Please check it out. I would like to introduce you to Matt Kaufenberg and Chris Lee, fantastic artists, have gone through the process of both having injection molding and rotocast figures made. Look at this right there. But also Chris has done an actual sofa bit figure and included the entire documentation. This right here is invaluable. I'm gonna have a link to all these resources for you in the description. Please take a look at this. The bottom line is Craftman likes all kind of toys. It don't matter if it's resin, uh, resin rotocast, injection molded, soft vinyl. I like a wide variety of toys. But I have learned that there is something a little extra special to the world of soft vinyl. Hey, thank you so much for watching one of my videos. Yeah. On behalf of Oto7, I... Thank you for watching. It's your boy. Oto7. Yes. I am Craftman. Instead of crafting, saying thank you so much for watching. I love y'all. And keep on steady crafting.